Hello everyone, my name is PJ and welcome back to my Let's Play of Demon Souls Part 25. Okay, so the last two videos were late because my internet upload speed was just ridiculously low. It was half a megabyte per second upload speed. It was so slow. It took almost 48 hours to upload Part 23. That is just inexcusable and I tried everything. I tried various methods of disk cleanup, disk defragmentation, virus scanning, I didn't have any viruses, I cleared my internet cache, all my cookies, everything. I did everything. I restarted the router, took the battery out and everything. <sighs> it only just barely went up after all of that. It's faster than it was before, but it's still really, really slow. And I don't know what to do about it. So, if I... If you ever see me miss a day, or if a video is really late, be sure to check my Twitter, because I always post notifications of lateness and absences on there. So, since I had time to reflect on the prior videos, given that it took forever for them to actually upload, um, I realized that there are a couple of things that I keep forgetting to mention and talk about. For starters, the Soul Thirst spell. I actually zoomed in on it a little bit when I was buying it in the one video. That spell costs 200 MP to cast. And even with the silver circlet on, I only have 195. So the only way for me to have enough MP to cast it is to equip the silver catalyst and make sure I have it in my hand before I go into the Storm King Archstone. That way, when I arrive, I'll be at full MP, I'll have just over 200, I can run into the building, cast it, switch out to the Storm Ruler and start blowing them up. It lasts for 30 seconds, boosts my souls by 50%, which is amazing, and should increase the amount of souls you get per run by at least 7,000. I wish it lasted longer. I, I would have settled for a smaller percentage bonus if it just lasted for like a minute. But yeah, today, today, we are going to be going to all five worlds and killing the unique enemies that appear at pure black world tendency, because I did go ahead and get them all to pure black. Yep, so, we're going to start in world one. Now, like I mentioned, if you, there's two unique enemies that appear in pure black. There's a primeval demon and a special named black phantom. The Black Phantoms are way harder, so you should probably go after them first, except in one case. And unless you have a lot of spare stones of ephemeral eyes, like me, it's a lot safer to just kill both the Black Phantom and the Primeval Demon in one visit. Now, Character Tendency. Character Tendency is extraordinarily annoying, because when you're playing offline, there is only one way to increase it, and that's by killing the special named Black Phantoms. And you only get one point to your character tendency for each one. It's extraordinarily annoying, because you had to kill all five of them in order to get to pure white, and then you had to kill several innocent NPCs in order to get from there to pure black. And once you're at pure black character tendency, offline, there's no way to get back to pure white unless you go through two full playthroughs and kill all five black phantoms twice each. Because they only spawn once per playthrough, and you need a total of ten points to get from pure black to pure white. It's so stupid. The other way to get toward white in character tendency is to help other players like kill bosses and invaders and stuff. Is there anything down there or is that just death? Okay, here come the regular Black Phantom enemies. Well, actually, it looks like it's just the one. Is that a proximity thing? Oh, it actually takes more than one hit to kill you now. Hmm. Yeah, here's the rest. I guess it must just be because uh, pure Black World Tendency is giving you slightly more hit points. But yeah, when it comes to worlds, you're probably best off keeping them at either neutral or pure black. Enemies are tougher at pure black and there's more of them, but 
you get more souls and higher drop rates so it's just overall better but yeah looks like it's still just regular dragling enemies but our good friend whose armor we're wearing should be appearing pretty soon that's a lot of drops guaranteed crescent moon grass drops every time and I don't think I ever mentioned this but that gate that starts off locked uh, it unlocks either at pure white or pure black you can get it to either and even though all of the doors relock at the start of new game new game plus that is uh, as soon as you enter this world it checks your world tendency to see if it's either pure black or pure white and if it's either then it unlocks immediately and you can come down here and fight execution of marauder before you even fight the phalanx before you even penetrate your first fog wall so yeah you weren't all that tough the first time I fought you how tough are you now come on out I know you're there right Oh, you on the other side, trying to trick me. Now I see you. Let me out, let me out. Okay, you still have about the same attack pattern as before. Only you seem to vote more. Holy shit! You see how much health she has? Or is that just... No, that's just raw defense. I'm not doing that much damage to her. This could take a while. Okay, I did not realize the Black Phantoms were this powerful. Are they all going to be as tough as Goro Vinland was? Well, it's fine. I mean, her attacks don't penetrate my shield. As long as I keep my stamina up and keep locked onto her, I should be able to kill her just fine. Yeah, that's right, I'm wearing your armor. What you gonna do about it? Oh, double handing it now, are you? God, I've only taken out a quarter of her health. She's like a new game plus boss at this point. Yeah, new game plus. All of the enemies in the game get stronger by inconsistent amounts. Some people claim that they get 70% more health and damage. After that, it's about a 7.5% increase per playthrough. Up to a maximum of New Game 6, I think. In the Star Wars games, it's uh, either New Game plus 7 or New Game plus 10, depending on the game. Although in Dark Souls 2, you can actually access the stronger New Game plus 10 monsters in New Game. But there are certain unique enemies in that game that don't appear until you're actually in New Game Plus. But you can get everything in New Game Plus, you don't have to go into New Game Plus Plus. Okay, got her down to about a quarter of her health. Thanks to the shield, she's still really easy. She doesn't have any ranged attacks, no spells. She doesn't have regeneration. She's just got one strong weapon and light armor. Doesn't look like she has any method of healing herself either. No herbs. No grasses. Oh no, you don't. Ooh, she almost tried to break through. I haven't taken any damage from her yet. And I don't intend to. One hit might be enough to kill me. Alright, one more hit. Gotcha! Oh, and that's probably the easiest of the Black Phantoms. Guillotine Axe.
got her weapon. Let's take a look at that. Guillotine axe weighs six pounds. Not as much as I thought it would, but I guess it explains why she was still able to roll, apart from just having really, really high endurance. Guillotine axe, just a regular axe, not a great axe or anything despite its size. Requires 20 strength to wield. Overall seems pretty normal. An axe long used for beheadings. It's short, heavy, and has a thick handle, but can sever one's cervical vertebrae in a single blow. It is disdained as an executioner's weapon, especially in Volataria. Yeah, so it's pretty much just a regular axe. There's nothing particularly special about it. But if you want to use it, like use the Binder Cross set and the axe and cosplay as Smeralda, then you can. Okay, now since we just killed her, our character tendency went up and the world tendency reset to neutral, but neither of those will actually update until we go back to the Nexus. So before we do that, just so we don't have to kill ourselves in body form four more times, because it's really annoying to do that in this world. There's not many ways to quickly kill yourself from any of the Archstones. We'll have to walk all the way to where the Primeval Demon is, and I do believe it appears near the Penetrator's boss arena. I did bring the large sword of searching with me, right? I forgot it. God damn it. And the reason that annoys me is because the primeval demons drop one colorless demon soul each, but it's not even a guaranteed drop. It's a pretty high and pretty good chance of it dropping, the point where it almost always drops, but it's not guaranteed. And I just wanted to be extra safe. And I do have the gold mask with me, we'll be treating that with sparkly once we head to world 4. Yeah, but I wanted to bring the large sword of searching to increase the chances of it dropping the colorless demon soul even further. I mean, most people get the soul from the primeval demons even without increasing their luck as astronomically high as I have. Most people don't bother with their luck at all. If it's below 10, usually they'll get it to 10 and then leave it alone. And they still get the souls. Most of the time. But I want all of them. And we've killed the red dragon, so... I'm going to worry about that here. One thing I don't think I've mentioned, and if I did, it was way back at the beginning of this let's play, is that either at pure white or pure black, I'm pretty sure it's just pure white, uh, the dragons over by the cliff, uh, where they originally appeared in 1-1, will actually disappear. And you can pick up all of the treasure safely. But I was going to wait until we'd actually killed the blue dragon before going to get the items it was guarding. And since the red dragon isn't here, we have nothing to fear. We can just run across the top of the bridge. Eventually, I will have to come back to all these worlds after I've finished with the primeval demons and black phantoms and all that, and reset them all to pure black right before I enter New Game Plus. Because when I do play New Game Plus, all of the enemies will be almost twice as powerful and I'll also want them to be amplified by pure black world tendency. I want them to be really tough. I don't know why, but I, it's also just because I'll have an opportunity to uh, show you where all of the um, new normal black phantom enemies are. Now, we're at pure black world tendency. Are these things going to burst out of the wagons now? Do you ever do that? I could have sworn at one point they burst out of these things, and I don't know what causes it. Hmm. Maybe it happens in New Game Plus. Maybe it's like a unique thing that happens only in New Game Plus. I have yet to heal since sitting foot in this level. Even after fighting the Black Phantom, I didn't get hit once by her. Well, I didn't take any damage from her. Obviously, I got hit. But my shield got hit. What the fuck? Did that guy just one-shot me? That guy just one-shot me. Luckily, dying doesn't send you back to the Nexus, so the tendencies haven't updated. But that normal enemy just one-shot me. 
Well, I think it's safe to assume that Executioner Marauda won't have one-shot me. That these regular fucking soldiers are too. When these... Uh, these guys are like the weakest enemies in the game. And they one-shot me? Is, is it just because my stamina bar was really low? Is that it? Gotcha. Stupid fuckers. Yeah, there are two big drawbacks to the spear. No real sweeping motion when you're using it from behind a shield. It, it does have a sweeping motion. If you roll first, you do that. And it doesn't have the direct hit property that axes and hammers do. So, can't really break through shields very easily. Ah, there it is. It's up there. I need to go around and go up. The primeval demons look really weird. I haven't really said much about what the primeval demons are or what they're like, other than that they drop colorless demon souls, and they appear at either negative four or negative three black ordinancy because they don't have to appear. You don't have to be a pure black for them to appear. Just. It's convenient for people to get the world to pure black anyway, so that they can fight the black phantoms and the primeval demons in one go. Because killing either of them will set the world to neutral. Yeah, so best to kill yourself only four times from neutral rather than uh, seven times. And yeah, there it is down there. It's like this big cocoonish slug thing. With a long tuning fork shaped tail, lots of weird little feelers in the edges. Its mouth just has four little fangs and a tiny little hole. And you can get close to it. You don't really gotta worry about attacking you. Yeah, so once all the other enemies around it have been dealt with, you can come over to it, you can touch it, you can walk into it. Just uh, don't stand directly in front of it. That's the only time it'll attack you. And even then, probably not all, even all the time. It'd probably retaliate. Oh, here we go. Yeah, see? That's all it's got. It can't move, it can't turn, it can't roll. It doesn't have a explosion attack. It's just this weak, kind of larval demon. And it actually looks very similar to the old one that we've been hearing so much about. The big head honcho demon that we've been trying to stop that this whole story is about. It looks like a smaller, softer, fleshier version of it. And they only appear at the two blackest world tendencies are incredibly easy to kill because they don't fight back. They only appear once per playthrough and... Drop? You've got to be fucking kidding me. <sighs> it didn't drop a colorless demon soul. There's nothing I really could have done about that, because I forgot to bring the large sword of searching with me and it was too late. Nah. Oh well. One less colorless demon soul that I'll get this playthrough. That's a shame. There's no way to make it come back short of going into New Game Plus. But there'll be four more. And I don't need all ten. I only need three in order to show you the one spell that you can get from St. Urbane, which I'm probably not even going to buy, really. And five in order to max out any one piece of gear that requires colorless demon souls. Because you only need one per level to upgrade those, I think. But yeah, we're done here. And as soon as we leave, the tendency should update. Yep, so we're back in the Nexus. Let's take a look. Yeah, Bolatarian Palace. That wait a second, that is not That's not neutral. It's glowing. Oh 
Okay, okay, okay. I get it, I get it, I get it, I get it. Okay, I know how this all works now. <laughs> um, it's not that killing Black Phantom Marauder and uh, the Primeval Demon resets the world to neutral. They just increase the world tendency by a number of points that would make it neutral if it were a pure black. Maybe four, three or four points each. So, Boletarian Palace is now in white world tendency. That's annoying. That means I had to die more times than I expected in each world in order to get them back to pure black. Oh god. Although, if you are going into New Game Plus, I suppose it's also kind of beneficial to you if you wanted to see the pure white world events again. Like if you just wanted to see other things that could happen. Maybe you want another free pure greystone from Skurver. Or maybe you just want to see what all of Selen's dialogue is, like if you say no when she asks you for the crest, and keep saying no and then eventually say yes, or maybe kill them, like attack the pure white NPCs and see what dialogue they get when you piss them off and when you finish them off, because I imagine they would have dialogue for that, and I was unable to show it. <sighs> so, hmm, now I'm wondering what I should do to prepare for my new game plus. Should I get the pure white tendencies again? Hmm. Well, whatever. Not gonna worry about it for now. Still not ready for the end of the game just yet. And I need my large sword of searching. Put the guillotine axe away. The broken sword. Okay, so I have no idea where the primeval demon could be in World 2. But we're gonna tackle this world next. We're gonna start at the very beginning. Just go through all of the areas and try and find it. I know it's kinda stupid to save Black Phantom Skurver for last. Because if, if I particularly have trouble with him, then I might have to leave to go back to the Nexus and get something to help me out with him. Maybe equip a new spell? What do I have? I have Solvay and Firestorm. And I should still have tons of spices on me, too. 15 fresh and 14 old. Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Now I just gotta fight my way through this whole level. Trying to find the primeval demon. I mean, I've had this world at pure black for quite a while. I keep it here so that I can farm ore off of the scale miners. Chunk of hardstone. Awesome. I swear, that Scale Miner's animation must... He must just start with his pickaxe raised. Oh, there it is. It's down there, where we found that one Stone of Ephemeral Eyes. It's funny, because it's not visible from over there. Hmm. Must have just been out of my range of sight when it comes to other enemies. Like, because you can see corpses from really far away that just appear pitch black and silhouetted. But there's also a middle range, too, where you can't see it. It's, it's weird, the way vision works in this game. Yeah, but here we are. Primeval Demon number two. Now, I'm not going to forget to put this on. Large Sword of Searching. Oh, wow. One double-handed attack. There we go. Colorless Demon Soul. Now I have three. Okay. Next step now is to walk all the way to Skurvis Tunnel. That means taking the lift down to the Armor Spider's boss arena and heading down to Skurvis Tunnel. The reason I wanted to try and see if I can find the Primeval Demon first is just because it's really difficult to walk out of where Skurver is. Like, you have to drop all the way down from his tunnel into that one ledge where all the uh, insect husks were. And then you need to fight your way all the way to the outside so you can take a lift up. It's uh, very time consuming. And lots of bear bugs in the way. And I haven't fought any of those bear bugs since getting this one to pure black one didn't see. So I don't even want to know how difficult they are to kill now. Or actually, 
My mace is upgraded now. It was plus one the last time I fought one of the things. It's plus five now, and I have way more strength and faith. Not to mention, I still haven't gone down to the river of lava. I need to equip all of my best fire resistant stuff, ring of flame resistance, cast the water veil spell. But even with all that stuff on, lava still does a shit ton of damage to you. Although I did watch this one speedrunner. I don't know how he did it. Like, even when you're running through this place, it doesn't hit you. My border is timed poorly. Junker Hearthstone. Oh, there's another Black Phantom enemy out here. Yeah, but the speedrunner actually managed to land in that first pool of lava that you have to put out with the water and roll over to the stairs. It did, it did a big chunk of damage to his health when he initially landed in it, but he didn't stay in it long enough for it to, uh, you know, dot, I, I think is the term for it, dot, damage over time. So he actually managed to get past the pool of lava without putting it out. The same speedrunner also showed me that there is one tiny little shortcut in 4-2. Remember how I was trying to drop down to that one reaper? but it was too long of a drop and I died. Well, there is a way to drop down to him, but you gotta land on something first. There's this little pool of water sticking out of the wall that if you roll to it, you can land on top of it. And then you can roll off of that down to the Reaper. I don't need to go all the way down there when I return to World 4, but I might just stop by real quick just to see if I can do it and just to show it off. It really doesn't save all that much time. Okay, here we are. Skurver's Tunnel. And there he is, waiting for us. Now, I've heard some bad things about Skurver. I've heard that he's got some spells. Some powerful ones. I may even need to... use some magic of my own. Okay, well, if I die, I'll return right back to the Armor Spider Archstone and can just come straight back down here. It's not that far. So, let's do it. Let's go, Skurver. The hell is that? Oh, did he just cast a generation on himself? Oh, fire, man, I got 100% fire resistance. You know what I'm wearing? I'm wearing the purple flame shield. That's another weird thing I heard about the lava, is that if you hold up a shield, it actually blocks the lava damage. Oh... Hmm, he timed that perfectly. I had my shield up. I had my shield up, but I guess the shield... I guess the shield goes down for just a fraction of a second when you attack with the spear. I thought it was perpetually up. But no, he hit me face first with a fireball and that's gonna one shot most things just cause it has a really it has a pretty long start up cast and flies through the air pretty slowly so it's pretty easy to dodge and block it's pretty easy to see coming just I thought my shield would be up the whole time and I refuse to believe that the shield was up and that not only did the spell go through the shield's fire resistance but that it also one-shot me after the fact? No. I refuse to believe that. That's like... I would believe it if this was like New Game Plus 6. But it's not. This is New Game. Regular New Game. Well, Skurver, I'm back. Let's try this again, shall we? Ooh. I can interrupt his regeneration casting. I wonder if we'll only try that once. AGAIN! Uh, I felt- I feel like I was attacking when he hit me with that. Unless that spell ignores defense. But I have- I have a great shield that's specifically intended to resist fire. Now I'm just gonna ignore these guys. I don't need their drops. I'm just gonna run past them. This will take forever if I kill them all every single time. Okay, you fucker, I'm back. 
Okay, first things first. Interrupt his regeneration spell. And watch for his fire spells. I guess that's the other important thing to do. Yeah, see, I blocked that. I blocked it. Oh. Whoa, okay. He's got fire spray. He has all of the spells that you can learn from the demon armor spider's soul. Interesting. Well, regeneration isn't one of them. At least I don't think it is. So what's your relation to the demon armor spider? So does he only attempt to cast regeneration once? shit. Okay, I swear he hit me with that spell at the same time I attacked him. But it also still feels like I blocked it. Do you have infinite MP? Oh shit, shit, I got hit. Now you don't heal, right? You just attempt to cast regeneration on yourself at the start and then that's it? Oh, hey. Hello. Why did you just turn around and walk away? That was really dumb of you. No, it'd be funny if you killed him with the Dragon Bone Smasher. <laughs> the weapon that the good version of you wanted to see so badly. I just saw him do the can't cast animation. Does that mean he ran out of fatigue or ran out of MP? I don't see him casting any more spells. He must have run out of MP. No, okay then. Uh, and this just got way easier. Okay, so here's your tip this guy can run out of MP. Unfortunately, unlike Final Fantasy, there's no way to drain MP from your opponent, so you can't make him run out faster. Just gotta wait for them to run out themselves. But you're basically dead now, dude. There's no way you're getting past my shield. Might as well give up. Lay down and die. Lay down and die. <laughs> Two down. These guys feel like super bosses. It feels really good to finish them off. Talisman of Beasts. Now, this is an unusual item. This is the only other talisman in the game besides the regular Talisman of God. With catalysts, you have the wooden catalyst and the silver catalyst and the insanity catalyst, but there's only two talismans. And this one. This one houses a rather big plot twist, actually. There's two ways, actually maybe even three ways, to get a Talisman of Beasts each playthrough, but you only need the one in order to read its description. So the type of Talisman as sea scaling in magic and faith, which is unusual since the Talisman of God only scales with faith as far as its miracle assist goes. But this one also has spell assist, the Talisman of Beasts can actually be used to cast miracles and magic. Of course, its scaling is the exact same as the Silver Catalyst, but it also scales with faith. So, I don't know if that means that your faith boosts the power of your spells now, or what, but let's just read it. An old wooden amulet resembling the old one. It can utilize both miracles and spells. The symbol of God was nothing more than the image of the Old One. So yeah, if you look at it, it looks like some kind of cocoon-shaped creature, which is kind of like what the Old One looks like. It looks like a more solid version of the primeval demons that we've been killing. And it, can let's, it lets us cast both spells 
and miracles because both of them are soul arts. Both of them are the result of the old one's existence. And the very God that's been providing the acolytes and worshippers and priests and all them with miracles is the old one. The very same demon that they want to drive back. So yeah, I don't know how this misconception among the church in this world started. I don't know how their religion formed. Maybe skewed stories over the centuries since its original appearance to the point where they forgot exactly what it was, because I don't know, I don't think any of these people know what the old one looks like, but we do because we saw it in the opening cutscene. These people didn't see that. But if you look at the regular talisman of God, you can see that it seems to have these weird flowing wooden scale-like things drawn on it. It still kind of looks like the old one, just more of a more of a 3D mural kind of image to it, rather than a 3D object. But yeah, Skurver had a talisman of beasts, so I think it's safe to assume that anyone in this game who has a talisman of beasts knows the truth about the Old One, knows the truth about this world's god. And there are other characters with talismans of beasts, so... But yeah, we beat Skurver, so now we can leave. Two down! Three to go. Now, I'm already at 51 minutes, but a lot of that time was just spent looking for the primeval demons. I think I have enough time for at least one more, but the next one on our list is going to be Black Phantom's uh, Ridiel, who this one, you have to do Ridiel first. You have to, because if you don't, then there's no way to get to him short of exiting to the Nexus first and then teleporting here, because there's no way to get from the Four's Idol Archstone to the Tower of Latria Archstone. You can't go backwards from 3-2. It's the only place you can't go backwards. So you gotta start in the first level if you want to do them both in one go. This is, of course, assuming that the Primeval Demon is not in 3-1, but so far they haven't been. I know where the primeval demon is in World 4, and it's also in a different level than the Black Phantom. So I'm just assuming that they're always going to be in different levels. So we just need to go all the way down to where Lord Ridiel is, to his cell. Which could be a problem, because I think the Mind Flayers might still be there, and Ridiel is hostile this time. So, oh, no, 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 no. I always forget to put my talisman away. I hope, I hope Ridio isn't too difficult. It would take a long time for me to walk down to him. Oh, hey, there's a Black Phantom Mind Flayer down there. Well, that's new. I wonder where else they appear. Oh, there's Ridio standing over there. Well, I guess that'll give us a chance to, uh, take out these guys. Make sure they don't interrupt our fight. Still don't know what kind of powers he has. I know he's got that... I think it's called the Phosphorescent Pole? Something like that? And he also has an iron knuckle in his left hand. And that that's probably... I'm just guessing here, but that's probably a kind of direct hit weapon. He's, he's probably going to use it to break my guard. Here it comes. No. Okay. So that pole has the same kind of moveset as the halberd. Not a big deal. Hmm. I think it might also do magical damage. It pierced my guard a little bit. But he also recoils pretty heavily from my shield. So it gives me plenty of time to get away from his attacks. And when he roars away, I can just heal. Now eventually, we're gonna want to switch sides. Because I can't keep backing up in this hallway forever. Maybe I can lure him down. Will he go through this doorway? 
Does he have a range of movement? How far can I guide you? What other places can I... bring you? Up the stairs, perhaps? Oh wow, you follow me far. Oh, I already have you down to half health. That's pretty good. That really is the only thing you've got going for you, is that you've got a magic... pole. Magic reach weapon. Okay, you need to stop following me, dude. You must have a range of movement. A limitation to how far you can go. <laughs> he almost turned around there for a second. Hey, follow me into this cell. Oh, nope, there he goes. Duh, okay. Weird. You have some very unusual pathfinding. I'm running out of grass. Oh shit. Oh shit. He's, uh, not fooling around anymore now, is he? Okay, he's gonna be back down here any second now. Late Moongrass. Okay, where'd he go? Did he get lost? Did he stop following me? Where did he go? Oh my god, where did he go? There you are. Hey, buddy! I'm all restocked on healing items and ready to kick your ass. Oh boy, okay. This guy's a bit scary. I kinda wish I'd brought the uh, Dark Silver Shield instead. 100% magic resistance. Wait, I do have the Dark Silver Shield. It's on me. It's just not upgraded. Should've switched to it. Oh boy, that was a risk. Oh, whoops, that's the wrong item! Frickin' hotbar. Heal, 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 heal. Okay. I can't go too far down here. Oh, cool! I, You can't hit me in this hallway because of the right hand trick. Yeah, you bounce off the wall. Gotcha! <laughs> That's the same thing I was talking about in the spiral staircase leading up to the old monk. Phosphorescent pole. <sighs> okay, well, the only difficult black phantom I've fought so far was Skurver, and he's not even that tough. But I've heard that Statsky is the strongest black phantom of all, because he has the ability to heal himself to full. At least that's what I heard. Oh boy, okay, so we got the phosphorescent portal. Let's take a look at that. Let's see. Does normal damage. There's no bludgeoning. Weird. But the pole weapon. Yeah, high magic damage with D scaling in magic and C scaling in strength. Requires 16 strength, 16 dex, and 12 magic to use. A long rod inlaid with blue gems that emit phosphorescent light. It's bladeless and lightweight, and due to a magical. magical enhancement. What? Okay, is that just... Okay. It slowly regenerates the wielder's MP. One of Lord Video's most storied exploits is his theft of this weapon from the... Witch in the Sky. Witch in the Sky? What Witch in the Sky? What the fuck is it talking about? Don't introduce new lore elements this late in the game. Freaking... Whatever. Well, anyway... Now that that is taken care of, now that Lord Video is dead, well, his Black Phantom anyway, well, he's always been dead, I think 
if we go back to the altar, the gargoyles will still show up and carry us. They should. Oh, Black Bender Mind Flayer out here. Um. Ooh, shit. That did a lot. That's not gonna work. I shoot you, you shoot me, and I dodge. There you go. Okay, those Black Phantom Mind Flayers are not to be fucked with. If I didn't have the Kling Ring on, I'd be dead. Wouldn't it be hilarious if in Black World Tendency, this thing just opened up when you were halfway across the bridge? Ah, uh, no, no, that kind of dickatry wouldn't be a thing until later Souls games. Fucking automatically resetting traps. Fucking Sin's Fortress. Just walk up to the altar, and gargoyles do show up again. Good. Now though, where would the primeval demon be? Maybe down the swamps? Seems like the kind of place that it would appear. Why do they sound like dinosaurs? Oh, everything here takes three hits to kill. So it's not so bad. Is the primeval demon down there, next to the big heart thing? I don't see it. The primeval demons are pretty big, so it'd be hard to miss. Yeah, it's most likely down in the swamp somewhere. How was I... How did I manage to hit you? <sighs> Whatever. I just must have a really big hitbox. Okay, I finally made it to a cage, at least down to the swamp. It takes a, took a lot longer to get here than I thought it would. Actually, getting down to the swamp takes quite a bit of effort. Because you can't get into it from behind since you drop off in order to get out of this place going forward in order to get to the in order to go from the second Brigia back to the beginning because you don't knock down a shortcut or anything you just fall off into the place and there's the second legion big old pile of corpses we just leave it alone I also have no idea why the primeval demons are where they are oh is that it? Uh, it looks like it might be it. Need to find a way up there. Yeah, but I have no idea why the primeval demons appear in the locations they do. Maybe they just wanted them to be in random, somewhat difficult to reach locations. Yeah, but here it is, right over here. Let me take out these guys first. Okay. Large sword of searching. Awesome. Another colorless demon soul. Now, do I have enough MP to evacuate? I do. Why does it cost MP at all to evacuate? Because as soon as you cast evacuate, all of your MP is restored. See? Why does it cost... <laughs> I don't know. And the last thing I'm going to do before I end this episode is show the colorless demon souls to Saint Urbain. So he can show us what they make. Here we go. Recovery. Miracle from a primeval demon soul. Actually, that's a miracle from three primeval demon souls. Thank you very much. Greatly recovers the caster's HP. In order to combat evil, God endowed mankind with special power. <laughs> if you say so. But yeah, it's just an upgrade to the heal miracle. It heals you more than heal. That's all it's for. Got 60 MP, takes two miracle slots. This is more of a New Game Plus kind of thing, if you ask me. If I get eight Colorless Demon Souls in this playthrough, I'm probably going to use five of them on the Dark Silver Shield, and then three of them to make, uh, what's it called again? Uh, the healing spell that we just saw. I've already forgotten what it's called. And then that'll be it until New Game Plus. New Game Plus, I'm going to show you a couple ways to get infinite Colorless Demon Souls. So you can get all of the unique equipment in this game fully maxed out. 
Yep, so that's all the time I have for this episode. Thank you all so very much for watching. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, because I really appreciate it. If you want to support me on Patreon, there will be an end card at the end of the video, and a link in the description below, alongside links to my social media. So, I'll see you all in the next video. Oh god, three of these things? Okay, Maria, time to bust out the big guns. Talking about her spells, what are you thinking of? And yours is 25. Yeah, you could probably use an agility boost. Let's go ahead and buy her hair. Up gloves.